a lovely tea party this afternoon. With all the delights that that means, yummy cakes and other delicious things. Now do you remember as a child how you loved birthday parties or tea parties? The excitement and you starved yourself the day before so you could really make yourself sick on cake and biscuits and trifle. And did you ever, later in life, have a high tea? Now there's something quite different, because it's important you should know this. This is very important that you know the difference between afternoon tea and high tea. Just in case you're invited to one and expecting the other, or so that you won't get caught out that you don't know the difference between afternoon tea and night tea. Afternoon tea. Delectable scones and cakes are the hallmark of an afternoon tea, which is served mid-afternoon. So, yeah, we should be finishing at half twelve. That's an appropriate time for afternoon tea. So we will be having afternoon tea. A high tea, however, includes much more substantive fare, such as meat, fish, egg dishes, as well as bread and, of course, desserts. And it's in the early evening. I remember um, Sometimes, when my father would take us for what was called a high tea, we had chops and liver. Um, do other people remember that? Chops and liver. Chops and liver, and that was a high tea. Anyway, now you know the difference between afternoon tea and high tea. This afternoon could be imagined somewhat like considering all of us, the Mad Hatter's Tea Party. And yet, and all its fine crockery. You know, when you look at this crockery, and I want you to examine it carefully today, because it's actually the property of all souls and sits in a cupboard over in uh, the hall. And the last time it came out was when the BBC required it for a film they were making about the Second World War. So that gives you an idea of its vintage. It's actually quite lovely, I think. And evocative. In the Mad Hatter, Alice approaches a large table under the tree, outside the Marsh Hare's home, and comes across the Marsh Hare, the Marsh Hare, the Mad Hatter, and the Dormouse, and they're all taking tea. They tell Alice that there is no room for her to sit at the table, but Alice is having none of it. Alice is not with us today, is she? No, she's not here. Alice is having none of it and sits down anyway at the table, irrespective of their request not to join them. The Marsh Hare offers Alice wine, but there is no wine, and she tells him he is rather uncivil, and he said he's not as uncivil as her because she was asked not to join them, and how uncivil is it to sit at the table where you've been asked not to sit? Now, in a bizarre moment, the man Hatter explains that time, and in, time is a him and not a it. Now, this was long before all the talk about what's binary and not binary and what pronouns we use and what pronouns we don't use. But the man Hatter explained that time is a him and not a myth. 
And he went on to say that time, being a him, was really upset with the Queen of Hearts and the Man Hatter himself because in killing time, they had murdered time. Some might disagree with the Man Hatter on time. Isaac Newton said time is an absolute. Albert Einstein said time is relative. And Karl Marx said time was invented by clock companies to send more clocks to the working class. And Cindy Loper said time after time. I thought I'd just throw that bit in. You might enjoy it. Then again, you mightn't. Then the Mad Hatter and the Marsh Hare attempted to stuff the dormouse into the teapot. Now I can guarantee you two things today. No matter who you are, whether your name is Alice or whatever name, you are most certainly invited to our afternoon tea. And your table awaits you. Secondly, nobody, and I guarantee you this as well, nobody will be stuffed into a teapot or anything else for that matter. But it may be a slightly mad tea party. I like the idea of what the man had when he said that time was now punishing him for murdering time, for offending time, and that time stopped at six o'clock perpetually. And now the Marsh Hare, the Mad Hatter, and the Dormouse must continuously have tea time, an endless string of pointless conversations. There's a certain element of truth about that, isn't it, in our world? Endless strings of pointless conversations. However, our afternoon tea is more noble. It's for breast cancer now. And by having tea here this afternoon and donating towards breast cancer now, you will help fund essential research into cancer. Breast cancer now is not only about research, it's about support. So our Mad Hatter Tea Party will have such a noble aspect to it. And I would ask you all to stay, enjoy everything that has been made for you, and to give generously. The Bible says that God created humans as body, soul, and spirit. And that we should take care of our bodies, which we don't always do, because they are, in a poetic way, temples of the divine. In Corinthians 12 to 14, for the body does not consist of one member, but of many. Christians should be involved in preventive health care and plan for injuries and illnesses before they happen. That is why it is good and wise to support such a charity as breast cancer now. You know, I think, particularly from the jurisdiction that I came from, come from, that decisions about women's health were always made by men. And it took a long, long time for women to establish the principle of prioritizing women's health. And sometimes in our world it's still difficult for women who've been affected by cancer to discuss openly and seek support. And this research is an imperative in our world today. 
There are some incredible stories about women's health and government attitudes to it and how women were nearly invisible in discussions about women's health. I won't go into any detail, but I can assure you some of the remarks made by politicians in the jurisdiction that I grew up in about women's health were incredibly ignorant at times. In Matthew 9, 12, Jesus says, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But not only needing a doctor, needing solidarity and support. Jeremiah, nevertheless I will bring health and healing to it. I will heal my people and let them enjoy abundant peace and security. I like to think that these promises were kept in establishing our own NHS health center that we kept the promises that are in Scripture. There is a sense of prophecy in those words. But also, out of such words comes the practice. It is not unreasonable to suggest that many in medical institutions were as a response from people who were believers and who were responding to their Christian calling. We think of our own Florence Nightingale. We think of Mother Teresa. We think of the Manor Hospital in Belfast. Many of them grew out of religious institutions who believed they were responding to the words of Scripture, bringing help and healing, as in Jeremiah. So, when you sit down, to enjoy your afternoon tea. Think on these things, but also enjoy the fair. Enjoy the tea party and give generously. Amen.